You know, in any craft, you'll have people using terms, especially craftsmen like myself, you'll have other woodworkers saying woodworking will be using terms that others have never heard of. And one of those terms I want to talk about today is the scrub plane, a scrub plane. Somebody says, you know, I use a scrub plane for this or that. What does the scrub plane do? And what is the historical perspective on it? Where did it come from? When did we start using it? And, um, and when would we use a scrub plane? What can you expect from a scrub plane? And that's what I want to talk about. And I want to take us back a little bit into the history of it. Because if we understand the history, we'll see where we came from and where we're going to. Um, here I've got a couple of old wooden block planes, we would call them. These were smoothing planes, they're not very long. And these two planes have developed, they've changed. You can see this one has a very wide throat. This one here has a very narrow throat. But this one, the one with the wide throat, was this plane in the beginning. So what this plane did, it was a smoothing plane. We used it to smooth surfaces like this. We took a shaving off. We made the, the, the surface nice and pristine. And, um, and that's what the smoothing plane did. When this smoothing plane started to wear down, look at the height of these two. These, this one is quarter of an inch lower than this one. When they start to wear down in their height here, this is, starts to widen and open up. The throat becomes wider the more wear you get on here. And eventually it has such a wide throat, it can't really be used for smoothing surfaces because the grain raises up too far ahead of the cutting iron. So what does this mean? This means that we throw this away. Remember, going back in the history of this, this wasn't a mass-made plane. If you go back to the 15, 14, 15, 1600s, this was a craftsman making this plane from an offcut of beach where he just made a dining table, a table leg. He had 12 inches of beach left over. He made a plane from it. And then eventually it became a production model and joiners became plane makers and plane makers were just a specialized field of woodworking. So instead of throwing this hard work away, he kept this plane. And this is when I was a boy as an apprentice. Often if a craftsman wanted to hog off a lot of wood, he would pull out an old plane like this one because it had a big throat. And what this plane will do is very interesting. You've got two planes here. You smooth the surface here. You get these beautiful shavings, but then you want to hog off a lot. Instead of adjusting this plane with the tap of a hammer, you have a plane like this one that will hog off a millimeter with each stroke. So now there's four millimeters, there's five millimeters, there's six millimeters. I just took off quarter of an inch of wood, six millimeters of wood in six strokes. When I finished with this hogging off plane, and that's what the scrub plane is, I go back to my smoothing plane, I put this pristine edge on there, and I'm moving in the right direction to getting my wood ready for preparation for joinery or whatever else. And that's what I want you to understand is, these planes were never abandoned because they didn't work, but something happened around the mid to late 1800s when Stanley and people like that started to introduce a tool we call the Bailey pattern, number four plane, number five, six, seven, different sizes of planes became bench planes. This one replaced this one, or should I say it replaced this one. But this one created a place for this one because it had the ability to scrub off lots of wood. When these started to get phased out because they were made redundant, this plane came into being. Craftsmen started to say, hang on a minute, we've got this plane and it will plane off some very nice shavings, but it won't hog off. I need a plane that I can scrub off lots of wood. And that's what this left the void in. So then the term scrub plane actually came into being in the late 1800s when Stanley came out with 
the scrub plane, which was a crude plane. It had no lever cap like this. It had no cap iron, had a thick iron. It was very crudely made. It was very crudely used because it was used to hog off wood, lots and lots of wood. You didn't really finely set it. You just took off all the high spots and prepared it for the smoothing plane like this one. And that's the transition from the wooden plane to the metal plane. And that's where we got the term scrub plane from. And it was used to replace the wooden scrub plane that was already in existence, but probably not named. We're using a scrub plane that wasn't named for maybe two or three hundred years before. Now we have a title for it. We're giving it the name scrub plane. And I want to show you what this plane will do so that you can judge for yourself how this works. This is got the open throat. I'm ready here. Now one thing, I haven't adjusted this yet. So if I do need to adjust it, I've got my hammer. This is the simplicity of it. Watch here now. So we use it tangential to the grain, generally. And what we're doing is, this is hogging off lots of wood on the high spots, wherever I want it. I can go along the grain like this. So I work from, whoops, work from the high spots, work down. There's quite a lot of protrusion, no matter which scrub plane, whether it's a metal bodied or a wooden body. The blade protrudes considerably uh, through the mouth. So it actually, this could be protruding a millimeter here, nothing on either side. So it is quite an awkward plane, no matter what type you have. But here, work along your board and just attack the high spots. This is no wimpy wood, this is oak. I'm using a nice piece of oak. So that's how we use it. Then we switch planes. This is when we bring in either the jack plane or the smoothing plane. And this hits the high spots like this. And you can see these planes work very, very efficiently. Get down your high spots, take off the ridges left from the scrub plane. And all of a sudden, you've got this silky smooth surface that you can work with. What about the edges of your boards? Yes, the scrub plane would be used a lot on the edges of boards like this. So here I am taking about half a millimeter off here. Thick shavings, yes, it worked very well. The thing is you can still pick these up. You can still buy these. What about the chamfer here? Come on here with your scrub plane. Take a chamfer off. Now, because the blade is protruding quite a bit, it might leave little undulations in the surface. So this is when you bring in your smoothing plane like this. Just finish off your chamfer and you end up with this beautiful, silky smooth finish. Like this. Now what happens if you pick up, this is going to be changing now from a century earlier. I come back in with two planes here. This is my scrub plane. You can see I've got this curve in the blade here all the way along the edge. I'll show you the two compared with each other in a second. But let's go here. Now this is taking off. This is a millimeter. That's probably too much. So just back off the iron. So this is doing the same as the wooden one. So it's hogging off these super thick shavings. I go back, restore my bevel with it. So you can see how handy this is in my everyday work. I pick up the scrub plane, take off the bulk of the stock, which is what it's really good for. Then I come in with my smoothing plane and just true up the surface with a few strokes. True up the bevel, just like I did before. 
So now let's take a look at the contrast between the two planes because if I put this here, you can see that the top plane has a big old gap on the either side of the center point. And this one's parallel along the edge. It's a straight edge with just the, the wings of the cutting iron taken off. And there you have the difference between the two planes, one with the adaptation, the other one with its original iron in place. So now you have this insight, you can look back on it, you can understand how we got here, you can look at the industrialism, you can look at the progress that was made through the periods, the industrialized giants coming into being, disappearing, the machine coming in. But now we're working with hand tools. We still need the scrub plane. And you can see why I reach for this plane. This is my scrub plane. There is no compromise. These two planes would work side by side equally. And the functionality of my modern day plane is just the same. I use it whenever I want to hog off a lot of material in exactly the same way they did two, three, four hundred years ago. And this is my modern day scrub plane. This is what I use in the everyday of life.